So uh, Colin Newman learned to ring at Chigwell Row in Essex at the age of 10, becoming tower captain at the age of 16 and district master at the age of 19. In addition to his commitments developing a band at Chigwell Row, Colin spent many hours in his formative years attending practices at Barkingside under the guidance of Dennis Ellisdon and later at Dagenham practicing for and attempting, mostly successfully, fields of 23 splice surprise major under the watchful eye of Dr John Armstrong. Colin's been actively involved in the Ancient Society of College U since the mid-1990s, serving through the stewardships in 2002 and 2003, and then as master in 2004. He's currently the College U's representative on the Central Council, and he also leads the Council's work group for schools and youth groups. Following a move from Essex to Berkshire in the early 2000s, Collins was a member of the Tilehurst local band and holds an improvers as well as a general practice each week. He was Reading Branch ringing master and the coach of the Oxford Diocesan Guild Young Ringers team who won the 2019 Ringing World National Youth Contest. He has recently moved to Bristol but hasn't actually had a chance to ring there yet. Um, Colin gets involved in all levels of ringing and teaching, of handling skills uh, to ringing peals of surprise Maximus. He gets most of his pleasure from observing others, especially the youngsters, and watching them develop and achieve high standards. So welcome Colin, thank you for agreeing to do this talk for us this evening. Um, I will hand over to you and let you carry on. Thank you very much, Vicky. Appreciate it. And uh, good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm glad to see uh, uh, a group of people has uh, chosen to come and uh, listen to something about Young Ringers, which is something that I'm quite passionate about. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, and if that works, I've achieved the two things that I was uh, most worried about, which is um, not being on mute when I started and managing to share my screen. So Hopefully, and um, Vicky will be able to tell me if it's not working, uh, you should see my screen there. Uh, the, the, the title of today's talk uh, is Building a Brighter Future by Engaging and Developing Youth. Uh, as I said a moment ago, that's something that I'm uh, passionate about. Um, it's something that um, I get involved in and try and encourage other people to get involved in, um, as we need young ringers if we are to survive um, as uh, an art and an organisation and a group. So let's um, move into this then. So we'll start with um, a little bit of an introduction. Um, so I'm going to start with a disclaimer. So nothing in this presentation is original. OK, so I don't make any excuses for that. Um, uh, all, all of what we've got in here uh, has probably been done before. Uh, it's probably been thought of before. So before anybody um, says as we're going through this, oh, I've, I've seen that done here, there and everywhere, um, that is to be expected. So all of the thoughts and ideas in this talk have already been had. Okay, so if you don't want to um, hear something that's been said before, um, you can go now, but I wouldn't encourage that. Okay, the issue we have is what is being done um, um, nationally uh, with youth engagement is in small pockets. So it's maybe uh, the odd tower here and there. There may be a very active district in a guild um, or association. Um, but what there isn't um, is a national um, approach um, and ideas, um, set of instructions, for want of a better term, on how to engage and develop youth. And there also needs to be more energy from other areas as well. We can't survive by doing this in small pockets, and we really do need widespread and sustainable approach to youth engagement if we stand any chance of survival going forward um, with the art of change ringing. Okay, so what's the problem? So th this, this, this is in, in, in two parts. And there's a little bit of audience participation here. And I'm very much hoping uh, that people have used um, Zoom enough now to know where the raise hand button is at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you don't, um, you won't be able to participate in this bit, um, but uh, hopefully you all do. So what I'm going to ask people to do is to raise your hand 
if you have more than one under 50 year old in your local band. Okay. Okay. That's really good. So of the 20 people on this call, uh, 14 have um, that many uh, or, or ringers of the age of under 50. OK, moving on then. So you, now you're, you're, it should have changed to lower your hand now. So if, if you don't have anybody under 40, then lower your hand. OK, so some hands have, have been lowered. So we've got 13 with uh, under 40s. Let's go a bit further more than one under 25 so lower your hand if you haven't got more than one over 25 under 25 sorry okay okay so we're still doing quite well so um 12 have more than one under 25 and now lower your hand if you don't have more than one under 18 year old Okay, so that, that's interesting. So that, that, that has gone down significantly uh, for the under 18s. So we're uh, down to a, a much, much smaller number of this group. And that, that's only um, a, a small representation of people. So that's only out of 20 people on this call. So we, we got down to seven um, had under 18s in their band. Now, if you extrapolate that out, uh, then that shows that we have an issue with the engagement of youngsters. When I learned to ring back in 1981, uh, I was in the southwest district of Essex. Um, I was at Chigwell Row. Um, there were five of us um, who were teenagers. Um, at Chigwell, uh, down the road, uh, there were uh, a number of teenagers. Uh, Barkinside, uh, there were under 25s. And many, many towers around the district had uh, younger ringers in the younger age bracket. And that is becoming less and less um, uh, uh, of a thing these days. Okay. So let's look at, excuse me just a second, do the right thing. Uh, what's part two of the problem. So we have a generation gap in ringing. And I think we all know this. Uh, if, you, if you look around these days, ringers are getting older. There are fewer and fewer young ringers. There, there's certainly more than a one generation gap at the moment. And, and without action now, and I'm not going to plaster lots of statistics on the screen because they, I think people have seen them all before. Um, I would suggest in 10 to 15 years time, if we haven't made any significant effort to recruit younger ringers, we will become possibly non-viable in that period of time. Sustainable sources. Now, this is something I'm probably going to talk about. Well, I'm definitely going to talk about um, uh, in more detail as we go through this presentation is, is the sustainable sources of young ringers. Now, I've got the church with a question mark there. Now, I um, uh, joined bell ringing via the church. Um, I was a member of the Scouts. Um, I regularly uh, went to church parade. Uh, I was um, approached as were a few of us uh, by the local tower captain and that is how I learned to ring. Now the, the, the issue we have now is I think the statistic is around about one percent of the national population attend church. Therefore we are essentially for the and for the very most part invisible to 99 percent of the population um, which isn't a good statistic. So the visibility of ringing with the national youth population is almost zero. So we need to look elsewhere. So as Vicky mentioned previously, I um, am uh, the lead of the schools and youth groups work group um, of the Central Council. Um, and I'm just going to talk a little bit now about the work that uh, we're doing um, around uh, a, a national objective, um, which will launch to engage new ringers from sustainable sources. 
So it's called the Central Council Church Bell Ringers Schools and Youth Groups Work Group. I really must do something about that. It's not particularly catchy. Um, I'm sure um, something different can be uh, made up. We call ourselves SYG, SIG, um, because um, we can't be bothered with the rest of it. So our objective, which was set by the Central Council uh, Executive, is to establish new long-term sustainable sources of recruits from schools and youth groups. Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, uh, just go out and uh, talk to people, I guess. So the membership, we've got six members who are teachers, former teachers, or who have experience working with young ringers. Um, that is deliberate and uh, for obvious reasons. Um, we want to draw on the experience of those people um, and, and use their experience within the group. And what I would say firstly about the group is it was very unfortunate timing. The group was established in March 2020 and held its first meeting in May. And to that end, I would be brutally honest and say initial engagement with organisations has not been particularly fruitful. Um, schools um, have been preoccupied with um, COVID, um, uh, the Scouts and the Guides, who are two of the bigger youth organisations, are far more focused on uh, their survival uh, than talking to us at the moment. However, a lot has still been going on in that group, even though we haven't been able to make any tangible progress so far. So what have we been doing? So from a scouting point of view, uh, we've been drawing up a set of five stage scout badges for use at a national level. Um, that is a longer term objective. Um, uh, the idea of that is that the first badge can be attained in one session of activity. So I know uh, a, a lot of people out there uh, like to engage with their scout groups and, and get them to visit the tower and do various activities, maybe chime a bell, uh, maybe ring some handbells, etc. And that would qualify um, the scouts for the first badge in that series of five um, and they would be staged um, up to the point of, um, of, of method ringing or call change ringing uh, depending on the path that's chosen. Now um, we've engaged with um, uh, some senior people in the scouts um, and also with one of their um, activity leaders uh, to start to draw up uh, the criteria around those five badges. Some of us will remember there used to be a Scouts Bell Ringers badge uh, that was removed uh, some time ago. Um, the, our timing there wasn't good either because the Scouts uh, renew their um, badges every three years and we spoke to them six months, initially six months after they'd just gone through um, a, a complete change. So we need some other strategies there. So we're also writing up some criteria for uh, a regional and or local badge. Um, that's more of a medium term activity. Um, there are um, things that have been done. I believe the Truro Guild um, or members of the Truro Guild have uh, already uh, done this in that area uh, with some success. Um, so we're going to be building on the back of that. And also, um, in the short term, uh, drawing up some uh, criteria or success criteria, that uh, point should say, um, for uh, ringing being used to obtain the hobbies badge within scouting. So that is our engagement there. Uh, we have the contacts in scouts and um, uh, that is the work that we're doing. We're also um, looking at how we can fit with the Girl Guides Challenge system. Uh, that is a medium term activity. It, it would be fair to say it has been more difficult to engage with the uh, guiding association than it has with scouts. Um, however, we have now found the right people to speak to uh, and we are making uh, inroads in there, um, which is good. Um, we're looking to create some how-to guides to help bands that want to 
engage with their local youth organisation. Now, there, it would be fair to say uh, that there are a number of towers out there that would not know how to go about approaching the scouts, or if they did manage to approach their scouts, um, what would be a good set of things to do with them um, once they got the, uh, the, the troop within the church or the tower, for instance. So uh, it, it, it's important that we have some, some good resources um, available uh, to, that people can draw on uh, to be able to uh, undertake activities like that and prepare them um, for what to expect when they have a whole uh, troop of scouts descend upon them uh, one evening. Okay. Um, so we've started to create uh, a set of suggested success criteria for Duke of Edinburgh Bronze, Silver and Gold Awards. Um, so the idea of that is um, a, a, a ringer uh, from the point they've touched a rope um, to uh, ringing peels can join that scale anywhere uh, and progress along it to achieve uh, the various awards within Duke of Edinburgh. Um, and um, we're now going to be working with art to ensure that these are at least roughly aligned with the learning the ropes scheme, um, as it would seem uh, rather silly if we didn't do that. So that is work in progress for Duke of Edinburgh. We have managed to establish national contact in most youth organisations. So we've got uh, the National Young Farmers. You can see some logos up there. There's, there's Boys Brigade, Girls Brigade, Duke of Edinburgh, Sea Cadets. Um, and we're, 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 we're gradually working through and, and, and making good contacts uh, in those organisations to see how, that, uh, how bell ringing can fit with their uh, activity set. Um, and um, how we can uh, enrich their activities to a certain extent. We're looking to draw up some marketing materials, including a video. Um, it, it's sort of been uh, in the thinking stage for quite some time. Uh, this is potentially another art overlap as well. Um, um, and we need to have those discussions to ensure that we're not reinventing the wheel. Um, but it, I, I think it's clear the people that look around YouTube and they, they see, if you've seen some of the, the bell ringing promotional material that's out there, it, it's, it, it is um, amateurish, to be fair, um, and we need something that is more professional, that, that, that shows us as ringers, as a group, in a professional light. So that is um, another piece of work we're doing. We've engaged with young ringers to understand what's cool about ringing. Um, now, um, none of us on the group are, uh, I would say, um, uh, young ringers, um, but we really ought to understand what these young ringers think is cool. Why, why do they do ringing? And that will help us uh, in developing um, activities um, and, and marketing materials um, that appeal uh, to young people. Okay, uh, so lastly, around the schools, um, there's been little direct engagement, it would be fair to say, due to um, COVID priorities. Um, we've been learning how ringing can be effectively included in the curriculum. As I say, we've got a number of teachers on the work group. Um, we've got um, uh, one ex-teacher uh, and we have um, spoken to other people as well on, on how um, we can effectively fit in the curriculum. But that's not the only way to engage um, with schools. So um, we can create simple one-off lesson plans, which can be delivered by non-ringing teachers, which is a piece of work um, that's, uh, that's underway. Uh, we, we, we've got a standard template uh, that can be used. Um, and also um, looking at how we engage for, for after-school clubs and enrichment activities. Now, so the schools are keen, um, as we understand it, to offer things outside of the curriculum um, as enrichment activities. Um, um, and after-school clubs are another really good way to engage um, and, and get ringing uh, in front of as many people as possible. Um, we're also looking to um, create some um, uh, uh, 
documentation which can provide some guidance on how to engage with uh, local schools and what schools will expect in return uh, for instance just just, just showing up on on, on, on a one-off um, for a, a, a quick session after school is probably not what the school's looking for somebody that will provide a week in week out after school commitment for a period of six to eight weeks uh, for an after school club is probably more like it and another thing at the moment there is looking at how mini rings can be used in schools. Now, they've been used very effectively on a number of occasions that we're aware of. Um, and there is also uh, the, the mobile Belfry 2 project that is, is going on at the moment, which is, uh, uh, I, I don't really know whether that's a central council initiative or not, um, but um, uh, there is an objective to create uh, a, a mobile belfry that can be easily erected um, uh, in any location, um, uh, far easier than the Chamber Ring, which although is an absolutely amazing tool, it, it is quite difficult to be fair uh, to get set up. So that's what we've been doing um in that work group um there's lots of background work been going on as i say we haven't published anything yet um but that will come um in in, in the coming months as we return to ringing um so uh, and it will all be available on the central council website uh, ultimately so what's next so we need to uh, as i've alluded to make sure has everyone has access to the resources that have been created uh, and get it advertised to the wider community. So uh, we've got a group of 20 people here. That's not enough people to know about this work. Um, we need that information to be cascaded uh, via guilds and associations, and it needs to be um, posted on social media uh, and marketed properly if people are going to be able to make use of it and understand where it is. Um, we need to engage um, with national media agencies and understand the advertising opportunities. Um, now, a, a small amount of work has been done on that. Um, I looked at um, how much it would cost us for uh, radio advertising, for instance, which is far less expensive than television advertising, uh, but that would potentially be outside of our reach. So um, maybe we need to look at um, putting information in, uh, in national journals or things like that. But uh, those opportunities need to be worked through. Um, we need to complete the work on uh, the schools and the curriculum. Uh, once schools are back, um, uh, maybe getting back to normal um, come September uh, after they've got through the next term um, and, and through the summer holidays, uh, we'll be in a, hopefully a better position to understand, uh, to engage with the schools with uh, some 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 real offerings uh, uh, of what we can uh, produce for them, and we need to com uh, continue to gather ideas uh, and work them into repeatable solutions. Now, uh, the repeatable thing is really important. So I think, as I said at the beginning of this, uh, we, th there are pockets of really good work that are going on out there, um, and we need to uh, learn about them and, and, and turn them into something uh, that anybody can do anywhere. Um, and if anybody uh, wants to take a look um, at something that, that, that's quite inspirational and a really good piece of work uh, that's been done on a local level, uh, the Truro Diocesan Guild has um, a, a, a a webinar on their site called the Braddock Experience by Roger Pierce. If you haven't seen that, I, I would suggest you go and take a look at it. Um, it's the story of how um, Braddock was turned um, from, um, from 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 nothing to an active and viable church via the ringing of bells uh, by youngsters. Um, it's uh, it, it's 53 minutes long, so it's an hour of your time. Uh, but make a cup of tea and have a listen to that. Um, or a watch of that, and I think you'll be uh, uh, quite interested uh, in what has been done. So that was the first thing that I was asked to um, talk about tonight, uh, is just to give an update on, on what's going on in that space. The other thing that I was asked to talk about is the um, ODG National Youth Competition Team from 2019. Um, so I will do that. Um, I won't take uh, as long over this as I did the last bit, but I will give uh, some uh, some summary of what we're doing. So um, back in 2019, 
uh, which seems like a really long time ago now, um, the ODG um, entered the uh, National Youth Com Contest, uh, which was held in Liverpool uh, and were uh, successful. Uh, there are a few pictures there that might sum up the day a little bit. So uh, we did manage to cram the entire squad uh, into uh, a Vauxhall Safira, um, which was a very enjoyable experience for the youngsters. Uh, obviously, the adults wouldn't fit as well. Um, the the ODG master sent us with um, a mascot, um, uh, which with an, an ODG jumper on, uh, which the team decided to call Colin, which I wasn't particularly in approval of, but um, what am I to argue? Um, and the last picture on there can uh, shows um, uh, the, the, the conductor, Dougie Vale, lifting the trophy um, after the presentation, which was um, uh, in peer head. OK, so the group themselves, uh, the, the, the ODG um, is a very large organisation um, and it is um, very large geographically as well. So um, picking the team is, is somewhat difficult. So we, we have about 25 young ringers between 11 and 18 and we have an entry criteria of them being able to ring plane hunt on seven unaided. Now, uh, at last count, when we did um, a survey, uh, we, we, we've got somewhere in the region of 170 to 180 young ringers altogether uh, between the ages of, um, of, of 10 and, and 20. Um, but th these 25 have either been put forward by their tower captains uh, or have been identified um, in people's journeys around the guild. That is then broken into the squad, which is a subset of 10 young ringers, eight plus two subs who represent the guild at the competition. Um, everybody in the group um, is invited to um, join the team um, uh, up uh, or wherever the competition is. So nobody's excluded from the day, uh, but there are uh, 10 ringers selected from the 25 or so uh, that represent the ODG. Now, the history uh, of the ODG in the competition is, is quite interesting. They've entered every year since its inception um, in 2011 and have always competed in the method category. They've been finalists on all by one occasion and placed second on 50% of their final appearances, but had never won it. Um, so they'd always been uh, within, within touching distance of holding the trophy, but, uh, but never quite made it. So um, uh, 2019 was a good year for them overall. So how, how do we approach the practice then? So it, as I say, it's, it's a big guild uh, and geographically it stretches from Milton Keynes um, all the way down to Newbury um, uh, across in a, in, a, in a diagonal, which is an exceedingly long way. And it's not unheard of for people to travel for over two hours uh, to get to um, one of these youth practices. So we tend to move them around um, the guild. So pe uh, the, some people get a short journey, some, some months and, and, and some get a long journey. So during the ringing, it, we limit it to Grantor and Plain Bob as a maximum. Um, there are ringers in that group who are capable of more. However, um, uh, they're, they're all aware that the, the focus for that particular practice is um, on striking. There are other uh, youth practices um, across uh, the guild um, at either branch level um, or at guild level, um, which are for method ringing, but this one is for striking specifically. And a lot of the practice is 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 fun bell control games. Now, I, I think um, uh, some people may have seen um, the talk that I gave at the art conference uh, back. Um, um, in, in, it was last year. We, we, we did have an art conference uh, last year, just before lockdown. Uh, and I spoke at length uh, about um, striking and, and how to achieve it and 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 Bell control is, is, a, is a key part of being able to strike properly. So things like jump changes, forwards and backwards rounds, and a little exercise called accelerando and relentando, um, which involves ringing accurately um, in, in rounds on eight, either at about 
um, two hours peel speed, i.e. Uh, almost ringing the bells down, um, or as slowly as they possibly can. I think we managed to um, um, ring, ring accurate rounds on an 800 weight eight at uh, three hours 40 speed um, at, um, at, at one point. Um, and, and, and those sorts of things are things that, that they enjoy more than being put through and drilled through plane hunt um, and grandsir all the time. So keeping it fun. This was suggested by um, um, more than one band member, actually, um, it is after each touch, the striking is discussed by the band not just um, the, the, the coach and the adult helpers um, providing feedback. So in, engaging um, the young ringers themselves to actually talk about what they felt was good and bad about a piece of ringing has proven to be um, absolutely excellent in developing the striking. Um, and the fact that they can be candid with each other uh, has built good relationships within the group as well. Um, we also make sure we have a mid-session break for socialising. Um, that's really important. Um, I, I think I started to get involved um, in the ODG team in 2000, early 2018. And the first practice I went to, they, they got to the mid-session break um, and the, the members from one branch went stood in one corner and the others in another corner uh, and, and everybody just stood in their own groups. So, um, uh, the work was done to turn that mid-session break into something that was far more sociable. Um, so that, uh, uh, they started to build those relationships, which is really important in any team. Um, and one thing that we did is we're, we're, we're lucky enough to have the Bells of High Wycombe, which has uh, Hawkeye installed. Uh, and we had um, a, a squad only practice before the competition using Hawkeye and using Hawkeye to provide feedback, uh, which again, uh, were, was openly and candidly discussed. Um, and, I, and I think um, a, a, a lot of that is, it, it sounds very, um, um, strict and it, and it sounds like not like drilling people through but if, if somebody's got the the passion um to want to win this thing uh then they need to um actually use the tools that are available and set and accept the results um and the other thing was for the the, the group is we organize court appeals on a regular basis and for those that are interested, uh, we also organise peels. So um, at least half the band in the 2019, I think in fact five of the eight people that rang in the final test piece had rung at least one peel. Some of them have rung many. Okay, so on the day, what did we do? So uh, Liverpool was a long way away. So to make sure that the team wasn't tired uh, on the day or, or rushing around to try and get up north uh, and get ready for the competition, everyone was encouraged to travel the night before, which was funded by the Guild. Um, that was an, an, an excellent um, uh, call by our coordinator. Um, I, I think it would have been too much uh, to try and travel from Reading to Liverpool uh, first thing in the morning uh, and then be focused during in a competition. Um, whilst we were travelling around during the day, we would spend um, um, some of the time ringing the competition touch um, at the towers that we visited. Everybody was given um, a slot uh, at the towers. Uh, and I think e each team got uh, either a 10 or a 15 minute slot um, in each of the towers that were open. Um, and we managed to uh, ring the competition touch as we went around before we were due to ring in the afternoon. In order to minimise the nerves, um, we decided that on the day, the best thing to do was to arrive at the competition tower just in time. Um, nobody in the band wanted to hear any of the uh, other teams ring. They didn't want to be put under pressure um, and, um, and, and listen to a good piece of ringing and, uh, and then be nervous that they couldn't match it. So we turned up last minute, which anybody that knows me knows that's not in my nature. Uh, it made me incredibly nervous that we were going to be late. Um, I was... <laughs> I was the coach of the band and, and, and I was asked by the band 
not to um, uh, be in the tower whilst they rang their test piece. Now that that that's optional in in the youth competition. You can be in the tower. Uh, the coach can be in the tower with the team. Not allowed to interact, obviously. Um, but they decided that they wanted to be in there on their own uh, without me uh, being there looking at them. They felt they would be more relaxed that way. It didn't do my nerves any good listening to them outside though. Um, but uh, that was their call. Um, so the touch was completed, photos done, um, and um, uh, then we uh, to uh, we went out and just chilled until the results. So overall, there were three really big um, things that I think made a big difference um, to um, the, the, the team in 2019, which helped us to ring. So the first one was boom whackers. Now, we, we did use boom whackers and, and, and then obviously not a, a means to success. But I think that what that slide represents is the importance of keeping everything fun for young ringers. Um, so it, 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 it's, it's not um, serious. Well, it is serious, but uh, not to make it too serious. Make it fun. Uh, get people laughing. Um, and if anybody wants to use um, boom whackers, you, you, you can get hold of a set of them and they're absolutely great for uh, um, uh, teaching uh, plane hunt uh, and rhythm ringing as well. So what was number two? Number two was Bristol Surprise Maximus. Now, that, that seems a little bit odd as well, uh, that Bristol Surprise Maximus should have anything to do with an eight bell striking competition for youngsters. Now, I think what this slide represents for me is luck. I think from my point of view as a coach, I was around at the right time for this band. Now, it would be fair to say that having four members of that band that had rung more than one peel of Bristol Surprise Maximus in their ringing career was incredibly helpful in terms of the uh, strength and depth and underlying capabilities of the band. Um, it, it, it was a very, very strong band. Um, it, interestingly, in the next competition, that band will not be there because they will have become too old, which is the interesting thing about this competition is, is, is the bands are, are constantly changing and developing. But this time round in 2019, as a coach, I was very lucky to have ringers who were capable of ringing peels of Bristol Maximus. Finally, um, success point number three was Daphne's chocolate cake and some fizzy drinks. Uh, now, ja Daphne's chocolate cake, uh, I can confirm, is exceptionally good. Uh, I don't drink fizzy drinks myself, so I don't know whether they were very good. But what this slide is supposed to represent is the socialising of the team and, and the building of the relationships over cake and drinks during those um, times that uh, we weren't ringing during the practice afternoons that we had once a month. Um, it, it's really important that, uh, that, that the kids build the relationships um, and I think that improves them as a band uh, and, and their capabilities as well. Okay, so that is all I wanted to say um, in this particular presentation, it's covered the two topics that I was asked to cover. I don't know if anybody has any questions. There's nothing in the Q&A at the moment, but do feel free to uh, type in any questions that you might have. Otherwise, I shall have to assume that I've just explained everything perfectly, which generally isn't the case. Colin, um, so thank you very much for that talk. Very informative and interesting. Um, I guess, you know, the, some of the, the early figures that you mentioned at the beginning is, is a bit of a worry if it's representative of the rest of the country. Um, and that's something that we all need to, to work on to try and improve. Not everybody has the advantage of having Bristol Max ringers in their young people's uh, arsenal. And, um, you know, <laughs> luck, I, th I think, you know, obviously you were very, very lucky and very, very jammy. Um, 
<laughs> and we're all dead jealous. Um, but obviously that's a testament to the, the encouragement that those young ringers have had in their ringing career. So are, are you aware of how those, those young ringers had, had got to the point that they were Bristol Max ringers and had that skill and that ability and that confidence to, to take forward the competition? Yeah, so so I, I I do know how how they, how they got the skill. They 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 actually acquired it at, at my twelve bell practices that I was running at Reading St Lawrence um, since two thousand and fifteen. Um, they've been regular attenders um, at that. Uh, to, to be fair, the, the the individuals in question um, are, are are exceptions. Um, they 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 are um, real high flyers um, when when it comes to ringing, uh, and I just happen to have four of them. That's pretty good going, and obviously, you know, cake isn't just for young people. No, 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 no. <laughs> Adults are allowed cake, and I, I did allow my cake myself cake as well. <laughs> Cake's good at any age. And um, just another question from me before we kind of there's some things popping up in the Q and A. Um, I'm aware that there's there's this idea of having a young ringers association. How does that fit with the work that you're doing on behalf of the Central Council and the, the schools and youth work group? Okay, so, so so that's an interesting one. So it is. Um, I have been um, uh, asked by Simon Linford, the president, to to, to sort of um, uh, keep a um, an arm's length view of, of what is going on uh, with uh, the the development of the Young Ringers Association. Now, it it it, it is something that's coming along that not everybody on this call will have heard about. Um, is the creation of a Young Ringers Association, uh, which is run by Young Ringers for young ringers um, and it's really important that that group uh, is seen um, by uh, potential members as being created by young ringers for young ringers so uh, in terms of its um, um, links to this group there are no direct links clearly um, the output of the um, SIG group um, if it generates young ringers will feed the Young Ringers Association, um, but it, it, it is not directly linked in any way. Um, okay. By the way, for, for anybody that runs Young Ringers groups that's on this call, the, the launch date for the Young Ringers Association, which is now going to be called the Young Change Ringers Association, because YRA sounded a bit like IRA, um, and they didn't like that very much. So um, that's going to be launched on September the 11th at um, what's hopefully going to be the National Youth Contest in Worcester. So there is a, a target date for launching that. Fabulous, thank you. So some questions from uh, people out there. Julia Cater's asking, do you have any thoughts about how to help keen ringers with non-ringing parents, please? Wow. Yes. Now they, they, they are <laughs> they are the hardest. Um, the the. It, it, the only way I have been successful in being able to help develop and keep young ringers with non-ringing parents is to engage with the parents directly. Um, so um, obviously there is an expectation um, for the parents to transport the young ringers uh, to the various places that they need to get to. It's all very well if it's just down the road um, at a local tower um, or it's, it, it, it might be a handbell practice in a local hall or something. And, and that's relatively straightforward because they can get there on their own and they can be developed directly. When you start asking parents to drive 70, 80 miles from one end of a guild or association to another, it becomes more difficult. Um, and the, the only thing I have managed to do successfully is engage with the parents themselves and, and, and talk to them and explain to them um, how their, their, their child is doing, uh, if they're keen and doing well, making sure that the parents know that uh, and they're enjoying themselves uh, and, and they're good at what they're doing. Um, but it's butter the parents up. Um, de de dealing with the, the young ringer themselves, I think it's, it's like any other young ringer, even with ringing parents, but the parents themselves are the ones that need working on. Fabulous, thank you. So from Andrew then, apart from the travel to Liverpool, what other funding does the OGG Youth Group receive? Right, so the, the, the 
from the youth for the youth competition band they receive funding for the travel to the competition which some years is high some years is low depends on where where it is um uh, they get team shirts um they get their cake paid for <laughs> so um and they get the steeplage um at the tower uh, that we practice at covered as well by the guild and do they do the young people contribute at all do they pay like a they, sort of they subscription they, or anything that they they pay a pound when they turn up which is probably the wrong thing so that that's another subject in itself isn't it is 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 um putting a value on ringing um I, I think there are lots of views out there and i may share them it is in fact that um uh, offering ringing for nothing is probably not the right thing to do i think once uh when when parents have paid um tens or even hundreds of pounds for uh, a term of sporting activity um or membership of um, scouts or guides or however much that costs these days there's a value put on that um and then it encourages them to get their children out to um to what they're doing the fact that ringing is free it's almost throwaway yeah absolutely so miranda has a, a problem she's got a, a young 16 year old doing gold duke of edinburgh and been told that she has to show progress so quarter peel of bob doubles inside learning to ring heavy bells 3700 away and learn another method does that seem reasonable yeah that's that's that, that's a really <laughs> that's a really interesting one um now it, it at the moment with dv it, it it's all subjective so um, progress do, do, doesn't really um, um, say anything at all. Um, somebody could learn um, to handle a bell um, a, a, as, as bronze, and that could be seen as progress, but I, I, I would suggest it's not, which is why we're developing what we've discussed called the sliding scale for Duke of Edinburgh. So it, it's, it's a box, if you imagine a, a set of boxes that goes from left to right, which starts with never touched a rope, can ring backstroke, can ring hand strokes, etc. And they start anywhere on that line and have to progress a certain number of boxes to the right um, to show progress against Duke of Edinburgh. So I, I think showing progress for this 16 year old, um, we probably need to understand where they started. Um, so if um, if, if they started being able to ring a quarter peel of bob doubles on the treble and move to a quarter peel of bob doubles inside, learning to ring heavy bells and learn another method, I'd say that's probably not enough um, for gold. Um, however, if it's somebody that had never touched a rope before and has managed to achieve bob doubles inside and is learning to ring heavy bells and, 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 has, and has learned other methods, that, that potentially is. But it's really up to the person that's got the Duke of Edinburgh um, candidate to make that judgment call at the moment, which is why we're doing the piece of work to try to help provide some guidance on what people should need to achieve for bronze, silver and gold. I, I think that's a really good development because I know I, I did it. I did the Duke of Edinburgh's award and, you know, rather cunningly cheated because I was already ringing and I, I used ringing for both, I think, my voluntary section and my hobby section mm -hmm. um seemed to manage to get away with it um but the the requirement at each level was you you had to ring i think you know uh i can't remember now but i think but for, for silver you had to be able to ring a quarter peel on an inside bell for for gold you had to ring a peel or conduct something or do something which was probably way beyond me and probably still is way beyond me yeah. um but as you say, if you've never touched a rope before, but you're coming at it as a beginner at gold level, it seems a bit unfair to expect you to be able to ring a, a peel by the end of it. So the, yep. the sliding scale sounds like a really good idea because it can fit in with anybody at any stage of the, the, the award scheme. Yeah. So so, so, so for Miranda, if, if, if you'd like to drop me a line at colin.newman at cccbr.org.uk, um, then I'd be quite happy to share the work that we've done already on that. Uh, in terms of the sliding scale um, and maybe even take some feedback on it as well. Brilliant, thank you. So from our association master, no less, great talk, Colin, thank you. Uh, here, here. Uh, I don't have any young ringers in my local band and the children of ringers that I have taught haven't stuck. How do you successfully mix adults and children and keep them both happy? Oh, that eternal question. 
Uh, yeah, uh, that, that, that's really difficult. And um, it, it, it all depends on the children. Um, it, uh, and it all depends on the number of children that are involved as well. If you've got a lone 13, 14 year old joining um, a band practice where ver uh, most people are over 50, um, then they're not going to stick it. That, that isn't cool. Um, if you've got more than one youngster, it, it, it's slightly easier to manage um, uh, because you, you, they can start to build relationships with each other and work together and develop together. And in fact, if, you, if you've got a group of three, four, five, six, even better um, uh, uh, to do that. Um, I think I'll, I'll be surprised that the, uh, the, 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 if the children haven't stuck it, um, it might be because they're not interested in it. I doubt that they'd be completely put off by the adults, but they might be. It's without knowing a bit more of the circumstances, hard to tell, to be fair. Um, but um, you could consider having um, a separate practice for the youngsters with just a smaller group of the adults um, and maybe some of the more approachable adults. We, we, we all know the characters that we can get within ringing. Uh, and um, I was, um, when I was learning, uh, I, I was very much initially taught by a very shouty man um, but I was um, uh, one of those that, that, that was so interested in ringing, I would stick with it. So maybe mixing the children with a smaller number of adults, get the children out to other practices, perhaps where there are other children. But the problem we've got, of course, which, which has been the, the, the whole um, uh, the topic of this talk, is, is there is a shortage of youngsters. So, so getting larger groups of them together at the moment is really difficult. That's probably a really waffly way of talking around an answer that I don't actually have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it's one of those, there's there's a multitude of um, causal factors, isn't there? So without, as you say, without knowing the particular circumstances and, and situation, it's difficult to, to kind of cast a, a generic response to something like that. Yeah. So next question from uh, Association Set. I mean, got the, the big cheeses in tonight. Um, on a practice level, how do you maintain engagement of young, of young people beyond their Duke of Edinburgh challenge whilst juggling schooling? Yeah, now, now, now there's, there's an interesting one as well. So it, 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 it's really hard if you've just got somebody for bronze, which, which, which is a three month commitment. Now, it, it, it's very easy for them to, 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 to go through and show some progress over three months, months show some commitment, um, uh, which, is, which is one of the criteria of DOV. I turn up for practice night every week, turn up for Sunday service ringing every week, and then junk it at the end of bronze. Now, the, the, the thing to latch onto there is there is silver and gold. Um, uh, and, and if um, the ringer that, uh, that has got their bronze is actually interested in ringing itself, um, they could be very, very keen to carry on with silver and gold as well. Now, the, you, can, you can do it as um, an activity award, you can do it as a service award, um, uh, and there are various different ways to cut it. Uh, I know you're not supposed to do the same thing over and over again, um, but you can you can do it as an activity for bronze, for service for silver, and then back to activity for gold should you choose to do so. Um, so it's just making them aware that there there are options to get the next levels as well. It, it, there, there's no way you can say at the end of uh, the Duke of Edinburgh engagement they're not just looking for a tick in the box. Um, and, and it's it's hard to tell at the beginning whether that's the case or not, but it's also really difficult to turn them away as well. Yeah. And I guess by the time they've, you know, if they get through to gold level, they're knocking on the door of university. So it's it's perhaps um, linking them up with university societies and, and getting them that next connection for, for the next part of their yep. career, it, if they get to their university it, yeah, interestingly, there there is another central council work group um, beyond schools and youth groups, which is called Universities, uh, which is part of the um, uh, youth strategy as well, uh, which is run by Ian Ralston, um, and 
um, that uh, is focused on um, how to um, maintain uh, young ringers uh, from their A-levels through into university um, and, and also um, to some extent in, in, through into college level as well, um, how to get them in touch with their university societies, how to deal with street student unions uh, and things like that. So th there's another piece of work going on there which is uh, directly linked uh, with the work I'm doing as well. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, thank you. So from David then, uh, you mentioned that in the early days, ringers stayed in their district groups during the social sessions. What approach or strategy did you use to get them to mix more? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I put them in a smaller room to start with. Um, that, 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 that was quite a good thing. Um, and, and then what I would do is, is I would just talk to them and, and, and I would ask questions. Um, um, and it doesn't really matter what the question is either. It's a question of what did somebody have for tea, etc. And, and, and once they start talking, I think with, with, with a lot of the, the kids, they're actually uh, becoming to that point, certainly in their, their, their teens, where they're becoming self-conscious and they don't want to talk in front of other people. But if you, if you ask them a question um, or, or, or interact with them as part of the group, they're, they're sort of it sort of forces them to speak. And once they've spoken, um, some of them, you can't shut them up after the first time they've spoken. Um, others uh, re remain quiet. But I, I just think it's, you've got to, when you're involved with young ringers and anybody that's actually been there, you, you, you've got to get yourself down to the young ringers level, not expect them to come up to yours. Yeah. Be a kid. <laughs> Good excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, thank you. So uh, from Marissa now, I've just bought a set of boom whackers. I'm thinking every town should have one now, kids or not. Um, we're just starting out again in Sussex without immediate access to church bells. So we'll be running on cake and fun. Sounds like an excellent plan, Marissa. It, it, it does, Ab absolutely. Those, those boom whackers are, are, are really cool. Um, and and uh, they're, they're better than trusting um, uh, young younger ringers with, with expen expensive handbells as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and from the other Andrew, uh, association treasurer, so full house from the top table. Um, how do you plan to keep the Young Change Ringers Association for all young ringers rather than just the elite? We think there's been a tendency for the Central Council to focus on the high flyers. Okay. Uh, that, that's interesting. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure where, where, where that view is coming from. So the, the, the Young Ringers Association is open to any ringer, um, and, and it will be, and I think, the age cap at the moment is 30 um it's any ringer at any standard um and uh, the the older ringers uh, who are members of that group will be expected to um act as some form of mentor for the the younger less experienced ringers so it, it will be young ringers teaching young ringers um there will be no entry criteria in terms of methods if you if you've joined bell ringing um, and you're learning your backstroke you can join the young ringers association um, so the, the, there's definitely no focus um, on uh, on on any of uh, the elite side of things at all there is a focus there, there, there are areas of the central council that are focusing on um, higher levels and there, there is an initiative that, that uh, Simon Linford has that uh, I think the wording is uh, uh, nobody should be prevented from achieving their full potential um, there's a piece of work called cast of a thousand that's going on um, which is a, 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 at the moment a series of online practices uh, with um, experienced ringers um, um, a, a lot of whom are from the um, uh, the, the, the two big societies um, assisting people in developing their ringing at a surprise major level at the moment um, so we're, we're looking to develop people at, at all levels um, not not just uh, elite. Absolutely, thank you. We're, we're all going to start somewhere. So, mm -hmm. um, brilliant. Well, that's all the questions in the Q and A box at the moment. Unless anyone's got some speedy fingers and, and typed something else in the next few minutes. So, other than that, just um, thank you so much, Colin, for your talk this evening. It's been really interesting, and I'm sure given some people some 
uh, ideas and some food for thought. Um, if you have any questions for Colin, I'm sure he's happy if you contact him, uh, colin.newman at cccbr.org.uk. Um, if you've got any uh, thoughts, queries, questions, suggestions, all those things, I'm sure they'll all be gratefully received um, and looked into. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you all for joining us for this talk as part of the Essex Reading course. Thank you very much for, for joining us, Colin, and uh, for everyone else for listening. And we hope to see you all again soon in a tower, hopefully. <laughs>